Next.js 13 was just released in the Next.js conf. And I thought I would go over the announcement blog post with you guys and see what's new in there. You can find it from the uh, Next.js blog. And over here we have a short list on what it includes. So with the Next.js 13, we get this app directory, which is in beta. And it includes layouts, React server components and streaming. And if you want to learn more about this app directory and how the layouts and server components work, I have a video about it. I'll leave a link in the description. So be sure to check that out too. Next, they announced Turbo Pack, which is in alpha. And what they said in the conference also, and it says it over there also that uh, Turbo Pack is this new Webpack replacement. And as you can see it right there also, they say it's up to 700 times faster uh, than Webpack, which is pretty fast. Then some updates to the next image. So it's faster with native browser lazy loading. And then something I was excited to hear about was the uh, next font being in beta. So it automatically provides self-hosted fonts with zero layout shift. And last, they improved the next link. So you no longer need to add the A tag inside of the link component. But that's like the overview of things. Let's dive a little bit deeper on some of these. So the app directory, I think we won't go into this uh, right now. Uh, if you want to learn more about the app directory, please look the video in the description uh, where we take a look on example on how to use the layouts and server components and so on. So let's hop right into the next ones, which was uh, introducing Turbo Pack. Next.js 13 includes Turbo Pack, which is new Rust based successor to Webpack. And when we look at the comparisons over here, this is pretty amazing. So with the Turbo Pack Alpha, uh, it's 700 times faster updates than Webpack, 10 times faster updates than Byte, and four times faster cold starts than Webpack. So these figures are pretty great and uh, this sounds very good. And looks like Turbo Pack only bundles minimum assets required in development. So start time is extremely fast. And they have a comparison also here. So with application with 3000 modules, TurboBat takes 1.8 seconds to boot up where white takes 11.4 and Webpack 16.5. So that's huge. And it also offers out of the box support for server components, TypeScript, JSX, CSS, and more. And as said, TurboBack is still in alpha, so many features are not yet supported, which is understandable, but I'm sure when it advances to beta and stable, it will have all the necessary features supported. And you can right away use TurboBack with Next.js 13 by using the dash dash turbo flag with the next dev. Next up was the next image. So they published a new image component. And right here we can see what it has different. So it ships less client-side JavaScript, it's easier to style and configure, it's more accessible uh, and requir requiring alt tags by default. I think that's great. It aligns with the web platform and is faster because nati native lazy loading doesn't require hydration. So all these things sound really good and I'm looking forward to testing this out because I have had some problems with the image component in the past and I haven't been fully like convinced of it. So I'm sure to give, give this a try right now. And if you are using the old image component, it can be now found from the next slash legacy slash image. And they also provide a code mon that will automatically update the existing usage of the next image to the uh, legacy one. Next up was the next font. So with the Next.js 13 comes this brand new font system. So it automatically optimizes your fonts, including custom fonts. So that's great. Uh, it removes external network requests for improved privacy and performance. 
built-in automatic self-hosting for any font file and zero layout shift automatically using the CSS site adjust property. So this one right here is very good, first of all, because anything you can do to reduce the layout shift on a page is a win. And also the fact that it removes the external network request and automatically optimizes the fonts sounds very good. And if we take a look on the example down here, we can use some Google fonts and it will actually uh, download the CSS and font files in build time and self-host it with the rest of the static assets. So no requests are sent to Google by the browser. And this is great because for example, if you are making a site that is used in China, for example, they blog Google and this way you can use Google fonts easily in your application too. So that's great. And also as said, the custom fonts work with this too. And here is an example of that. And then the next link. So the link component no longer requires uh, manually adding the a tag as a child. So that's good. I think it just makes everything much more convenient and logical. And they also have a code mod for the link, new link component. Next, the OG image generation. And this is also something that I made a video about uh, showing how to use this OG image generation to actually generate images from HTML and CSS automatically and uh, dynamically. So I'll leave that video also in the description. So I won't go in the details over here, but rather watch that video so you learn all about it. Then next, there is some middleware API updates. So uh, the headers can be now set for request pretty easily. There is example, I think that's good. And then we can also provide a response directly from middleware without having to rewrite or redirect. Okay, this is interesting because the first version of the middleware uh, used to do this. So you could return a response from a middleware, then the next version of the middleware required us to rewrite or redirect in order to return a response. And now they are going back to returning responses from the middleware. I think this is good because at least I had some spots where I was thinking that it would just be easier to have a response returned from the middleware. And I think it's good that they are moving back to this approach in uh, Next.js 13. So this is good. Oh, and looks like it's also still in beta or experimental. So it requires uh, the uh, configuration option inside the Next.js config, but that's cool. Then last, we have a list of breaking changes. I won't go through these. I think at least some of these we already went through, but yeah. That's the Next.js 13 release blog post, release notes. I don't know what are those, but yeah, I'm excited to try the 13. The biggest things for me probably are, well, the app directory. So the things that you can build with these layouts and server components and all that stuff is very interesting and exciting. And uh, I'm looking forward to testing it out more. Again, if you want to learn more about the layouts, server components and the app directory stuff, watch this video over here where I explain how to create a simple application using the layouts and also the use hook from React using the basically React suspense. So yeah, watch that video. And if you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video.